to tell us a little more, first we have the former ISRO chief. He's with us this morning to tell us a little bit more about the entire space story, where India is in this journey. Let's just go over to him to understand more. ISRO chief Sivan, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Tell us first, sir, India's space story, ISRO's achievements. They make it one of the leading space agencies in the world. Space tech is an area that India is cutting edge in. And I think today, at a day when we talk about India's need to grow in other areas, AI, quantum physics, for example, what did we do right in this particular area? What was the ecosystem building that took place years ago? Uh, Indian space program actually started with a noble vision of uh, providing that uh, space-based technologies for the benefits of the common man. That was the, the vision with which that ISRO was initiated. And uh, for that, uh, that uh, Dr. Vikram, Vikram Sarabhai was uh, of the view that the technologies required for achieving this vision to be indigenous. Now uh, that uh, we have come a long way and we have developed launch vehicles, we have developed the satellites, and uh, we have developed the ground segments. All these things are uh, indigenously developed. Now we are providing services to the nation. And at present, each and every moment <coughs> of the common man of the India is one way or other linked to the space technology. That much achievement we did. And a very important thing is all these things we have achieved indigenously. That is more important. Hmm. True that. But sir, you know, the other big chapter in India's space journey has been the private companies and their participation. Companies like Pixel doing groundbreaking work in satellite imaging, Agnikul, Skyroot, we mentioned that, are working uh, again on indigenous rocket launches. So what kind of policy changes or perhaps infrastructure support do you think India needs to fully unlock the potential of private space sector? And how do you actually imagine private public, you know, collab on this one? Now basically, this uh, particular aspect of opening up the, the, the space sector potential for the locking, unlocking the space sector potential for the private sector, it was initiated in 2020. And uh, it was a bold step by the, our Honorable Prime Minister. And uh, immediately after the, the, the bold step, that lot of private companies started uh, groundbreaking work. And uh, the type of developments happen in the satellite area or launch vehicle area, it is really amazing. And uh, what I am telling is, this the private people are showing that they are not less than ISRO and they can do even better than ISRO. Mm -hmm. That way, by opening up the space sector, it's in the, the startups and private companies are doing excellent way. And now we are thinking of uh, that already we have uh, shifted that uh, PSLV project to the private sector mm. for making its own uh, rocket PSLV. Mm. And uh, this is yet another uh, event. And now they are planning to shift the other launch vehicles like uh, GSLV Mark III, SSLV also to industries to make it. So that way, the, the, the whole the private sector ecosystem on the aerospace area is really growing very fast. And uh, they are really doing a wonderful job. And I am sure that uh, they will come to equal to Israel very soon. <laughs> Chandrayaan 3 success, <coughs> Gaganyaan, all of this obviously marks India's ambition beyond Earth's orbit. But what we've heard about is that interplanetary missions can require sustained funding, long-term strategic vision essentially. It's not something, uh, you know, that can be done over the short term at all. Can you tell us what India's next big priority when it comes to deep space exploration, what the that should be? Now, immediately that uh, after that uh, Chandrayaan-3 mission, that uh, next uh, that, uh, big mission, the that, deep uh, space exploration, is that on the Venus orbital mission. This project is already appro approved by the government of India. 
now it is uh, going on very well and uh, by 2028 india is planning to launch a probe to venus that way mm. it is a next step that one has already approved program already that programs like uh, next uh, mars mars orbiter mission such things are there but the venus mission is one is already approved and it is going on very fast and uh, there's a time slot also to launch by 2028 I'm coming back to my question, sir, on public-private partnership on this one. And you know, Indian space program has historically been government-driven, but with satellite-based services, space tourism, even asteroid mining becoming some of the future industries that one hears of, how do you see ISRO's role evolving in these areas? Will it continue as a guiding force? or do you foresee more hands off regulatory role like you see perhaps nasa shift with spacex for example now definitely this uh, that our future in the space area is, is really is a vast this one and uh, that they in in addition right now there is a very clear directions up to 2040 uh, that uh, Bharat uh, Antarish Station, we have to go uh, build, and also that man should be landed on the moon by 2040. These are the directions given by government for ISRO to do that work. Hmm. And uh, now you are thinking something beyond that. Definitely, that uh, more exciting missions like uh, our mining the asteroid, all these things are required. And uh, only thing is that requires a huge amount of investment. and uh, private parties should come forward to collaborate so isro is not isro also can contribute on technological developments but who has to do what that it has to be decided later but that is a lot of collaborative efforts are required is a single agency alone considering that time technology development and money is uh, involved so single agency alone is not sufficient to manage so it has to be done by multiple agencies together hmm. in this hmm. one i am sure that the private people's contribution will be in a major way that's what is expected very soon hmm. all right tell us what is india's biggest competitive advantage and and what gaps do you think our country still needs to bridge when it comes to emerging we already have emerged as a global leader in space tech Uh, you know when number 1 when it comes to a few different aspects we've been the first for example to reach a particular part of the moon but what more is it going to take to set us apart so definitely that is uh, our uh, india's uh, that uh, effort mainly on the space activities on the low cost access to space regarding the technology development that is there we are also in on par with other people we are no way less than others that way i would say that we are we are we are equal to them but we are not going to compete with anybody we are we are <laughs> we are doing our our own job with our hmm. own definition hmm. but at the same time we are our uh, the biggest advantage what india is doing is this is they doing executing all these costly projects in a very cost effective way that is a main uh, purpose and main objective hmm. of that india's uh, the space missions 